that time period, I began to <laughs> get desperate. <laughs> say, it's about time. I say, really? It's about, it took you nine years to get desperate? No, I lived in desperation, but I got desperate. I had to find an answer because, you know, we love God. We were going to church, and the Bible's clear on God's will for us, that he's good, but I wasn't seeing that in my life. And so, you know, a call came crashing in. This one day the attorney called and said, okay, we're, it's, it's done. We're filing a lawsuit. Now, he's not one attorney. He's in the list of attorneys. And for some reason this day, I had the revelation that I'm in trouble. <laughs> Fear kind of dulls your senses too. It kind of, when you're in survival mode, you're happy to survive. There are no dreams, so you just kind of adapt this mindset of, hey, I made it through the week. I made it through today. But I had a revelation that, listen, dude, you're in trouble. Your family's in trouble. You've, you have no more credit left. Whenever I call my dad, the first sentence, this is no exaggeration, he would say to me is, how much do you need this time? I have borrowed tens of thousands of dollars from my parents and relatives. I owe the IRS thousands of dollars. I have no options. I can't even pay the $300 a month rent for the little farmhouse that's fallen apart. And now an attorney wants to file a lawsuit against me. And so I go upstairs, I lay across the bed, I'm weeping. I say, God, you've got to help me. And he spoke to me right away. I was, I was really surprised. He spoke to me right away. And he goes, remember the scripture? My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in Christ Jesus. I said, yeah, I don't have that. He goes, you know why you don't have that? You've never taken the time to understand how my kingdom operates. You go out and buy things and then ask me to pay for it. You're, you're using the wrong system. Learn how my kingdom operates. Kingdom operates? We're going to heaven. I love you. I like worship my church. What do you mean how your kingdom operates? What does that mean? I mean, I'm, I'm a Christian. I'm going to heaven. I had no clue. One thing I did know is I went downstairs and grabbed Dorinda's hands and said, Honey, it is my fault. God just spoke to me. I apologize to you that we're in this mess. I don't know what God meant by it. He said the answer is the kingdom. I don't know, but he'll teach us. I have no clue, but we're going to find out what this thing is. And so we began a journey to do just that. And so God began to teach me. And one of the first things he says is, hey, you know, I like to hunt, right? If you're my partner, you know I like to hunt, so you should say yes. Yeah. Okay, good. Because it's important. I'm just kidding. But I like to hunt. And so I get, I get emails all the time. People say, quit telling all your stupid hunting stories. <laughs> Sorry. That's who I am, man. That's how God got my attention. How did, he get, how did he get Peter's attention? He caught all those fish. I mean, it worked for Peter. All right. So I remember I was coming into this deer season, and I hadn't gotten a deer. I've been, you know, buying all the ammo, buying all the stuff you do and everything, and no deer. And, I, you know, it's just kind of a mirror of my life. You know, nothing's working, right? And God says, why don't you trust me for your deer this year? Like, really? Are you going to tie one up? What does that mean? <laughs> Remember, I have no concept of kingdom. So what does that mean? You're going to trust me for your deer. What does it mean? He, then he told me, get a check out, write on the memo section for my buck, lay your hand on that, and send it to the ministry I'm going to tell you to send it to, and come into agreement by Mark eleven twenty four. Therefore, when you pray, believe that you receive, and it shall be yours. So believe that you receive right now, not when it shows up, Gary. Understand, believe that you receive right now, your dear, you have it, not when it shows up. You got that? That's important scripture. Now, that was my first experience with that scripture, so I did that. <clears throat> we were living in Oklahoma at the time, had no land to hunt, <coughs> had no place to hunt. But a guy in my office invited me down to Thanksgiving at his grandma's house. And so he said, there's a few deer around, so I went down there. Of course, when you hunt deer um, professionally, you scout, right? I'd never been there before. He says, he didn't know much about it either. He goes, where, where do I go? He, you know, I had my gun. Well, where do I go? I went down there. He's, I don't know. There's a, uh, there's, a, there's a tree out there. There's a woods back there. So it's, just, it's a tree. Why don't you stick to that tree? Now, it's in, the, it's in a pasture field. You know, hay field. I mean, it's just barren. You know what a hay field looks like? And there's one tree in the middle of the hay field. Now, would you tell a guy that's a good place to hunt? Just go sit by that one tree in the middle of this barren field. Don't you think the deer would see you? <laughs> but that's what I did. So I went out there and sat down. And so I'm sitting there. And with, without uh, knowing it, a buck 
is coming up behind the, he's coming across the field full speed, directly at this lone tree behind me. I didn't see him. Until he stops the tree, he smells me. He goes, I heard a snort. I look over, and he's standing. Here's the tree. I'm sitting at the tree, and he is right here, his face looking at me. <laughs> I mean, Baron Hayfield. I say, where did you come from? Of course, when he saw me, that was it. He, he took off. And I made a fantastic shot offhand at a running white-tailed deer, and I dropped that buck, and I was like, did that just happen? I mean, where did that buck come from? How did I hit that deer? I mean, I was in shock. My friend who had asked me to come down and hunt, he comes over, oh, you got the buck. I said, yeah, but I, see, when I made that prayer and I thanked God for it and I sowed that seed, I wrote a piece of paper out. I received my buck on this date and I stuck it in my hunting coat. I said, Don, no, come here. I don't think I had much to do with this deer. Let me show you. I pulled that piece of paper out. And I said, Don, I don't understand this yet, but something, God's kingdom did this. God did this. And so I did it the next year. Because, you know, you think it's a fluke, right? Your mind says, well, it's just one time. Every year after that, in 45 minutes, I'd have my buck. So when I saw that happen a couple years in a row, the one that really freaked me out, remember, I'm watching how the kingdom operates. The kingdom is a government that has laws, and I'm observing it. And so a couple years later, it was deer season, and so I sowed my seed because I've learned this. Is how I get my deer every year in 45 minutes, so I sow my seed. I go out there, I sow for a buck, and there he is. He's over there, and he's crossing the neighbor's field away from me, 200, 200 yards away from me. That's my buck. That's what I sowed for. That's him. But he's going the wrong way. He's about to walk into the woods over there. And God spoke to me, tell it to come to you. What? That would scare it away, you know, not out loud, just tell it to come to you. So this is my very first, uh, my second year bow hunting. I mean, I didn't know anything about bow hunting. I didn't wear camouflage. I was only 10 foot up in a tree. I mean, I knew nothing really. I'm just out there by faith, I'm just nothing. So I figure I'd add some verbiage to the, what I'm gonna say. I said, dear, in the name of Jesus, stop, turn around, and come back to me and stand still under my tree. That's exactly what I said. I figured I'm bow hunting. I need all the help I can get. <laughs> so this deer, he stops, he turns around, and he starts meandering back across his 200 yards, and he comes up under my tree and stands perfectly still, directly 10 yards under, 10 feet under. I'm not that bad a shot. I took that one home. But that caught my attention. The kingdom caught my attention. The kingdom. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing. And thanks for watching.